Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of RDR. A little bit more of an informal episode today than you'll normally see on my channel, but I, as you can see in front of me, I got some pretty cool stuff here and I wanted to show it to you. So this was a really great Craigslist vintage laptop find. And I have three laptops from the early 90s here that I got in an epic deal uh, that the the gentleman I bought them from got from an estate sale and had absolutely no use for them. Uh, basically untested. Did He did say there was a good chance there'd be some problems with them uh, from what the person at the estate sale said to him. So I wasn't um, going to sit down and test them and check because he gave me such a good deal on them. I really just thought, what the heck, I'll buy them. So I am not using a microphone today, so it's going to sound a little bit maybe echoey, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of do a quick rundown of what I have here and show it to you. So, again, three laptops here. Uh, the first one, now, I can't plug all of these in and power them up for various reasons. Uh, first off, none of these have an operating system working in them that I can find. Um, second off, as I go through these, I'll explain why they're not going to be getting powered on in this video. But I just want to kind of show you them and uh, maybe see what specs we can find regarding them. Now, first off, there is power cords for this one and this one. The good news is this one and this one can run off the same power cord. The problem with the power cord that came with this one is it's only the one piece. So I got to go to a thrift store or somewhere and find a pretty generic um, second half of the power cord. Once I do that, um, I'll have a power cord to use back and forth with these. Now, they, the reason I know that that will work is because I can use the second half of the power cord uh, that runs on my MSI and it works in these. It's got that like three prong style power cord adapter, which is needed. Um, the Epson, when you power this one up, runs fantastically. I'm gonna bring this up to the camera here. As you can see, so this is a working Epson with, it doesn't look to have an operating system. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what to put on here and how. Uh, it only has a floppy drive, so hopefully it works. Otherwise, I am in trouble. <laughs> I don't know how. Um, another cool thing that the gentleman gave me that I didn't expect was he gave me a brand new box of Memorex um, floppies. 3.5 millimeter floppies, uh, brand new. I mean, it's awesome. There's only one disc missing from this 10 pack when he gave it to me. So um, I'm trying to figure out some ways to get something on here, probably MS-DOS or Windows 3.1. It's the plan so far. So actually, as we speak, I am formatting MS-DOS 6.22 uh, to some floppies on the ThinkPad right now. It has a working uh, floppy drive on the uh, the docking station that works great. It's the first time using it, so I'm really excited to see that that's working. So I'm formatting some disks to hopefully get uh, some disk images of 6.22 to work on this computer so I can get something on here to make it run. Uh, let's have a look at it. Now, as far as ports go, there is dial-up. Uh, there is a PCM CIA card of some kind, some sort of network adapter card right here, which is really cool. Um, the only thing is I have, there we go. And it also looks to have this extendable, you can see it there, it kind of pops out of the PCM. It's like a dial up card to be able to dial up with that. Um, it's pretty interesting. Once I figure out how to get it out and have a look at it, we'll take a little bit more uh, pay me, maybe a bit more attention to that. Keep an eye out. There's going to be a lot of videos on these, I'm hoping. So, like I said, this is the one that works flawlessly. Let's open it up here. And as you can see, it is in fantastic condition. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I am so pleased. Even the mouse pad, like the trackpad, look at that Epson. It doesn't even have any wear. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, the condition that this thing is in. So, if you're wondering, this is an Action Note 895C. And on the back, I did notice it has some specs. So, we are running 
This is model number AN, ANP-4. The dual scan color screen, eight megabytes of RAM with a 540 megabyte hard disk drive. I really wish I could find a manufacturer date. However, I cannot. Although I do enjoy this sticker, this Epson Care Road Service sticker, which is kind of cool on the bottom. Um, so I haven't really dug into too much more on this. Um, there are some ports on the side. It looks like there's microphone, headphone, and I mean, they're pretty interesting. It looks to be microphone, headphone, and headphone, but I'm not really familiar with what those logos mean. And then there is a turnstile volume here next to the floppy drive, which again, I really hope works. The latches for the screen are in great condition. So that is wonderful to see. And it's just, it doesn't have a scuff on it. It's just like, I mean, this alone was worth the price I paid for all of them. You know what I mean? So that is why I bought these, even knowing that there might be some issues. Now, so that's the Epson. It's great. The grid powers on as well. Um, it powers on to this bizarre looking screen though. It's pretty much just a gray screen um, that I really have no idea what's happening. So I don't know if this thing actually is work, working condition or not, but I'm definitely going to try to put DOS on here too to see if I can get something to happen. Now this one has some slight blemishes on the top, not much after I cleaned it up. Um, again, this is a grid. Let me see if I can find the model. You know, this is the funny part about this, is it's got a French keyboard. I don't see a model for this um, anywhere. I think I found it on the bottom though. Let me see. Yeah, model 4025. And the funny part is I have found a disc image of the exact MS-DOS or 3.1 OS that came with this in the store. Uh, I'm going to try hard to get that to work on here. So yeah, this is model 4025. Uh, I don't see any specs, but let's um, let's look up what that would be. So let me give me a sec here. Let's pop up the grid. Four zero two five, and let's just see if we can find some specs here. Hold this back. So, according to vintage laptops, and this may or may not be accurate, so um, it's likely what's in here though. This is a Intel 804-86SL processor, obviously made by Grid Systems. Two megs of RAM, up to 32 megs of capable. Let's see here. So it probably came with MS-DOS 6.0 or Windows 3.1, 9 inch screen, 640 by 480, 6 pounds, 3.5 inch, 1.44 uh, floppy drive. So looks like it has an 80 megabyte hard drive, I'm not sure. The best part about uh, this is this looks like to be a 1993. Uh, release and again if this is correct it did retail around twenty one hundred dollars so that is pretty cool um, again ports on this one are greatly limited you get your power supply here uh, you get the floppy drive which again I really really hope works and you get this gigantic serial style port on the back um, that looks to may or may not have had Actually, oh cool, which slides shut. Oh, that's awesome. It does have these adjustable little like feet, so you can screw them out, I don't know, to give yourself leverage. That was a weird thing for like early laptops. Um, battery supply spot, and you know, it looks like there's some battery lights here. Let's put these back up. I can find them, where do they go? Well, there looks like to be somewhere. I just lost them when I did that turn. That's so funny. Here they are in the front. Battery uh, indicator lights. But, you know, there's not a whole lot. I do like the industrial look of this thing. I've never owned a grid 
or known much about him, but let's open it back up one more time. The hinges on this uh, hold great, but they're like a little wobbly um, until you get to, you know, until you stop moving it. So be, I'm gonna be very careful with this. Um, but like, look at that, like it's a tiny screen. I mean, but it's amazing. And I do love this, um, this French style keyboard is just cool. So a French style keyboard is not something I'm familiar with, but he did say it's French style and it, it just, there's some just different stuff on here. And like enter says entree. And I mean, I don't understand what half of these words are. Like number, I just, it's just insert, support. I don't know if they're just cutting them off because they couldn't fit those words, but I mean, I don't know. I've never seen one. Escape is a chop. I mean, <laughs> I'm probably butchering these French words, but I mean, it's so cool to see. So this is awesome. Um, it does have a variety of lights, just like the, pre the prior uh, Epson does like right here. Um, Epson has them here. This has a bunch of indicator lights here, as well as a bunch of switches. See if I can get those in the camera for you. Uh, but again, I haven't had much of an opportunity other than getting it plugged in and seeing that it does power up. But again, the screen turns on and lights up, but it's got like this gray bar. I don't know what's going on here. So we'll see if it's workable. Last but not least, and I am so thrilled to have this computer, except for the one gigantic flaw. So this is a Sharp here. What is the model on this? Let me see if I can find it. We have a Sharp. Oh, let's see. The good news is the um, instruction book came. There it is. Okay. This is a Sharp Notebook Computer PC 9000. Uh, this does not have any specifications listed on the back. However, this is in fantastic condition, has an awesome LCD display there, and um, floppy drive right in the front, which can come out and be replaced with a CD drive, which of course I don't have, but um, there's one huge flaw here. It powers on just fine, but the screen does nothing. It just stays black like it's off. And um, I did a little troubleshooting. Uh, this thing does have a lot of like, by design, it looks to be one of those computers where at the time it was kind of designed so it could easily hook up to external monitors. So I have done cycles through to make sure it's reading the screen and I cannot for the life of me get this thing to work, which is super unfortunate. Um, not only that, but this thing is built like a brick and looks very, very hard to get into. Not that I am really savvy at those kinds of repairs whatsoever. I've always been more of a software person, not a hardware. Um, so if anyone has any suggestions on how, how to troubleshoot this, um, please let me know because it, it looks, it's in such good condition that I can't understand why the screen just wouldn't work unless it's just decided it wanted to go out. Uh, which I don't know if that's something these are notorious for, but regardless, it is really, really unfortunate. Now, despite that, it does power on great. The LCD screen down here lights up wonderfully. And then look at this thing. It's, it's, it's just, there's not a scratch on it. It is an impeccable condition. So again, I'm just super bummed that the screen will not power on because this would be my laptop of choice of the three if I could. If, if, if I had like, if I get this thing to run. So, um, we'll go ahead and shut that. As far as ports, it does have, um, this, what is this? My gosh, I can't think of it. S video, uh, power. It does have headphone, microphone, and looks to be like an audio out port. On this side, we do have a PCM CIA slot, of some kind, it does also have a Wi-Fi card in here, or not a Wi-Fi, excuse me, but some sort of networking card uh, that it's come with. And there are some ways to get the battery out, hard drive, things like that, it looks like. Uh, not too much otherwise, um, but it, it's just, again, it's in fantastic condition, and it's just, it's just beautiful. I mean, there's not a scratch on the screen, and if, yes, I have tried to see if, you know, changing brightness or anything, I mean, of course, uh, you know, it was my first thing I tried, but I just can't believe I can't get it to run. But I mean, look at this. It's just wonderful. So uh, that is a Sharp PC 9000 that may or may not live again. Now, 
pardon me there, the Sharp did come with its manual, which is just amazing. So this is cool. The Sharp's the one that's 100% complete. I mean, it has the power adapter, which works. Um, that is, you know, the original. And it had the full instruction manual, which I love reading that some whoever did on this was really serious. Like they took notes in here. They have a highlighter. They highlighted tons of stuff. I mean, it just made me laugh. And they even put the original stickers on it and just set them in here. <laughs> so that is great as well. Now, as far as specs go on the Sharp PC9000, uh, once again, I'm going to look this up and just see what we can find here. Okay, so the Sharp PC9000, and again, this may or may not be this one. It, it looks like it may not be, but it likely might have eight megs of RAM. Let's see, Windows 95 possibly came on it. I think the one they're reviewing here might have been a newer build. One gig hard drive, possibly, I don't know. Oh, 100 megahertz Pentium processor, 11.3 inch screen. I do know that's correct. Two PCI card slots, that's correct. So, uh, it still doesn't give much. This is an old review from QVC. And I do believe this looks a lot newer than the one I'm looking at. So, regardless. You know, it's really cool to have just, one, have been able just to kind of get a, get a look at these. Have a look at this book. And, uh... I'm really excited to hopefully get one of the three running at the very, very least, the Epson. Um, then, you know, I'll see if I can get the grid to run. If I can get something going here, I'm certainly going to keep them. If I can get all three of them running, I'm certainly going to keep them. Um, but as it stands now, I'm really going to focus on the Epson, getting this thing running. I'll go to the grid. Um, and if, you know, all else fails, I'll probably end up at the very least, keeping this one and selling these two uh, to someone else who has better hardware capabilities and repair repair capabilities than I do. So uh, that'll be my goal is getting this to run for myself and getting these two, if I can't get them to run, to someone who can, who can, you know, enjoy them, um, to get them working and enjoy them. So thank you so much for uh, checking these out with me. You know, if you've ever owned or have any experience with any of these, please leave a comment. Uh, if you have any troubleshooting tips for me, uh, or you have any good know-how how, how to get operating systems on these floppy thing, disk, floppy disk only computers, please let me know as well. Um, I am so open to any suggestions you may have. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Hi folks, really quick update on the vintage laptop finds. So, no good news. Uh, I did start to try to load some things onto the Epson. Uh, I was trying to get MS-DOS installed on there. And for a second I was having a bit of luck. Um, simply because at first it was just, you know, throwing some really weird you know, can't read disk errors and stuff, but I was able to overcome all that. However, uh, out of nowhere, it just decided it wanted to die. And that was it. So after that, I, you know, I did notice it was pretty hot underneath. It wasn't the battery. And upon further investigation, it just decided, it just, it would, you know, the power would blink and it would just not boot up again so rest in peace Epson uh, as far as the grid goes I did try to do the same thing install MS DOS just to get any sign of life other than this weird gray screen it was giving me it looks like a display issue nothing uh, seems to change as it does read the floppy disks so rest in peace grid the Sharp, I took apart and I completely removed the display. So I took the entire LCD panel, you know, opened it up, took it off. 
check all connections to see, now remember this could, this was booting up and it sounded like it was working and running stuff, however the screen remained blank. I reset all the connections, I didn't see any bad wires. Now keep in mind, I am not an electrician or a PC repair expert. So I just do this for fun and uh, I learn as I go. I mean, I reset every connection, took all the ports out, cleaned them, or the connections, not ports, but um, as I put stuff back together, which was quite difficult, I found it surprising how difficult it was to get everything grounded and back together. Uh, once I did, I plugged it in and the exact same thing. So rest in peace, sharp. That being said, there's probably not going to be any videos on these, well, there's not probably not going to be, there is not going to be any videos on these laptops in the future. I am sorry to say that. I was really looking forward to doing some things with these. So, you know, I'm my search continues. I'm definitely know I, after getting these and taking some time and looking at them that what I really want is a Windows 95 laptop with a working CD drive. Now, I've had a couple in the past. Of course, I don't have many more due to bad luck. They just stopped working, um, and I ended up selling them for parts, much like what I'm doing with the three now. So I'm just going to try to get what I got for them. We'll see. Maybe somebody uh, who knows a little bit more than I do will be able to bring life back to these machines. So that is my hope. That is my update. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.